Hello G.I. Joe and 118 scale collectors. This is The Human Mechanism. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. Instead of looking at a figure or a vehicle, today we're going to be taking a look at a specific class of 118 scale weapons. Specifically, we're going to be looking at anti-tank guided missiles, or ATGMs. The necessity for weapons in a military diorama is obvious. It's about as obvious as a certain YouTuber who thinks he's being clever by using a sock account to insult me, thinking that I haven't already figured out that it's him. They are unique weapons, adding a level of nuance to your 118 scale military, showing that your soldiers are ready to go up against heavy armor, despite having no equivalent technology. To the weaker faction of an asymmetric war, they are invaluable, being portable by man or a crew to disable or crack open even the strongest armor. Many popular ATGMs use semi-automatic command to line of sight, or SACLOS, guidance systems, meaning the operator must maintain the sights on the target in order to guide the missile. Typically, this is done through wire guidance. So, how many ATGMs are on offer in the 118 scale? The most common ATGM represented in 118 scale is the tow missile. It is also the most varied, whether it be mounted on a tripod or on top of a vehicle almost exclusively the Humvee. This example of a tow missile from the BBI Elite Force Up Armored Humvee set is perfect for customizing. I have an extra one that I love to mess around with, like putting it on the bed of a pickup truck. This is another, less accurate example from BBI, this time from the Elite Force Combat Command series. This was meant to fire a missile by pushing it from the back. I got this with an Elite Force set that came with a Desert M113 and a 6x6 ATV back in 2005, when I was only 10. Even at such a young age, I had very little use for those grotesquely underscale Elite Force M113s, especially in the troop-carrying role. I mean, come on, it's just a hollow shell. I seriously doubt it would have killed them to make it a little bit bigger. Fortunately, they did have some versatility, having places to mount the included weaponry. By popping on the tow missile, those little useless APCs became tank killers. The next ATGM is the M47 Dragon. With enough volunteers, Cobra will conquer the G.I. Joe team, and then the wha- You fool! Are you making popcorn during my dramatic monologue? I shall have you punished at once! A mandatory one month in an ISO cube! I'm not making popcorn, sir. Then what's that noise? The M47 Dragon is an interesting piece of equipment to have in the 118 scale. It wasn't exactly the most popular weapon system in the US military, and in the case of the Bravo Team figures, by the time they were released in 2007, the Dragon was long since overshadowed by the Javelin missile system. Speaking of Bravo Team, the M47 is actually mislabeled as a tow missile launcher on the packaging of their first series of modern 118 scale figures. The M47s seem to be a bit under scale, and as a result, don't work well with their intended figures. The bipods are meant to be in contact with the ground, while the tube of the launcher rests on the shoulder of the operator. This cannot be done for the examples with the bipods. On a positive note, the M47 from the Elite Force gear sets has a removable forward shock absorber, and it actually comes with a missile. The next 118 scale ATGM is exclusive to the World Peacekeepers line, the French and West German Milan. It sits too low for figures to fire from a prone or crouching position, therefore it's best for it to be situated on something tall or mounted on a vehicle. Next is the FGM 148 Javelin. Now, with this new and improved his tank, we shall conquer the G.I. Joe team. Nothing will get the drop on us now. <laughs> This is way too small, but like the M47, the Javelin's launch unit comes equipped with a removable forward shock absorber and a missile, which looks nothing like an actual Javelin. I know what you're thinking, it's just a recolor of the Dragon missile. You would think, right? But if we compare them, the Javelin missile is quite a bit bigger and a little thicker. If you're not going to give us the actual Javelin missile, then why go to the trouble of making a new mold that's essentially just a bigger version of something that already exists? Just repaint the M47 mold to save money. Last, but not least, 
we turn our attention to the World Peacekeeper's aerial rocket helicopter. This chopper, based on the Harbin Z9W, a license-built version of the Eurocopter EC-365 Dolphin, has a modular system that allows one to switch between various weapons, one of which is a rack of four Chinese HJ-8 Red Arrow ATGMs. Each tube is removable in order to simulate the tubes ejecting once the missile is fired. Customizers could, theoretically, make a 118 scale tripod mounted version of the HJ-8 built around these missile tubes. So, that's about all the ATGMs in my collection. Hopefully this broadened your horizon and gave you a better idea of what's on the aftermarket. With that said, this is the Human Mechanism. Yojo. Joe!